Hey guys, what's up? It's Pseudo Pluto here, and I thought I'd make this video. Uh, so basically, what happened was that uh, uh, this channel that I haven't seen a lot since like high school, early college, uh, came back from the dead and posted a video a week ago uh, saying Fedora is the new default Linux desktop. And this guy, I, I watched him a lot when I was like really into my Linux phase back in high school, and I mean, he he came back from the dead, like a six months hiatus, just to talk about Fedora, and I think that sums up a lot of my feelings um, about Fedora and the Linux desktop. And you can see that my opinion is with a lot of other people too. Uh, you got uh, Linux Experiments, I think his name is Nick. You got Tech Hut, whoever he is, you know. All these people just saying Fedora is amazing, right? And you know. It kind of is. I think Fedora is the new default desktop Linux distribution, just as um, our our good friend Infinite, Infinitely Galactic said. Uh, <laughs> so I wrote up some notes of why I believe this, and I'll post the link to the notes um, in the description of the video. But basically, um, this is not really a surprise to anybody who's been using Linux for a while. Uh, the first bullet point is just saying like this is eight plus years of refinement. I, I looked up the earliest um, blog post I could remember about Fedora Workstation, and it's from here, uh, April sixteenth, uh, twenty fourteen. So you can do the math on that one. It's over eight years when they announced Fedora Workstation, and you can read this this blog post. I'll post it in the description of the video too. But it's basically saying we need to polish up the Linux desktop, and this is um, from from Christian Schlaler. I don't know how to pronounce that name. But yeah, he's basically the the lead guy at Red Hat, um, focused on desktop Linux, and his blog is a really good insight into the direction that desktop Linux is moving. But yeah. Eight years ago, they announced that, okay, Red Hat is going to be focused on improving the Linux desktop. Uh, if you don't remember the, the scene back then, you know, it was it was pretty rough for Linux users. Um, drivers were an issue, you know. Uh, th there was just like that whole like systemd versus uh, upstart, you know, like holy war. Um, most new distros were just like various skins of Ubuntu, you know. It's uh, Ubuntu, but now you have XFCE. Oh, it's Ubuntu, but now you have, uh, uh, what was elementary? It was like some weird fork of GNOME, right? Uh, oh, you have Ubuntu, but this time it's gaming focused. Um, Wayland wasn't a thing. OBS Studio, you know what I'm using to record this video. It just started development, you know? It, it, back then people recorded videos with like MSI Afterburner and fraps. Uh, KD, KDE Neon didn't even exist yet, you know? Uh, KDE... It hadn't gone through his whole like desktop focused phase um, yet. This is a really long time ago, and here we are. Red Hat um, is saying, "Okay, we're going to focus on the Linux desktop." And the reason why this was such a big deal back then was because at the time only Ubuntu was the one focused on desktop Linux. Um, the other um, two of the big three, Fedora and Red Hat, and then OpenSUSE and SUSE. Uh, they were kind of focused on having their um, distros kind of be like testing grounds for their corporate uh, distributions. Uh, Fedora and OpenSUSE were both in a really rough state back then, at least compared to Ubuntu, right? Um, Ubuntu, through whatever legal loopholes it had, it would include stuff um, like, uh, where is it? I think I put it down here, right? But included all this extra stuff that just made desktop Linux a lot easier back in the day. Things like codecs and drivers and font rendering, right? Th that's what Ubuntu's like competitive advantage was at the time, was that it had that legal loophole and actually cared about the desktop experience where if you wanted to run Linux as a daily driver, you had no other option besides Ubuntu, right? And another example of this is, yeah, exactly, um, Ubuntu drivers. So they wrote their own custom bash script to manage uh, changing out the x11 config files for 
uh, Intel versus uh, NVIDIA GPU usage on the Optimus laptops, right? So if you wanted to use desktop Linux back in the day, your only option really was Ubuntu and the various spins based off of Ubuntu. Um, and then what changed? Uh, well, as this blog post kind of, you know, kind of shows the start of is that Red Hat actually starts caring about the desktop Linux um, space. And a whole lot of stuff happened in the eight years that this uh, blog post was posted and this work was started, right? So Wayland, Wayland was adopted basically as the default future of the Linux desktop for um, uh, like a display server. And this, this really tightened up the space of desktop Linux because now it's up to like KDE and GNOME and the other desktops to write their own Wayland compositors. And basically what that was was like natural selection. So GNOME right now, in 2022, is like the only daily drivable um, Wayland uh, desktop uh, environment, period, full stop. You know, KDE is working on it, but they still have some bugs to iron out. Uh, you can say, oh, but what about Sway? Sway um, still has, um, it's not a full desktop environment, and even though it has the WL Roots library that you can build desktop environments off of, uh, nobody has really like adopted it as a sort of like generic um, implementation of Wayland for writing their desktops off of. So and, and <laughs> GNOME, right? GNOME GNOME spells the end of Ubuntu's Unity. Um, GNOME has a lot of contributors that are uh, employed by Red Hat, right? And so Red Hat basically has control over the de facto implementation of Wayland for, for, for desktop Linux, which is kind of crazy, right? And it means that all these various desktop distributions kind of just fade away. Um, they're just obsolete and uh, they're not that relevant anymore. Like FSSCE, LXDE, LXQT, they're just all gone, right? So all those various spins of Ubuntu, right? All that fracturing that uh, people put on top of Ubuntu to try to make a new Linux distro, right? It just became like untenable. The other the other thing that changed in those eight years, right, was the adoption of Flatpak. Uh, Flatpak is really important because a huge, a huge part of that competitive advantage again for Ubuntu was um, the ease of use, basically. If you needed to install a piece of software, it would either be um, in the Ubuntu repos already, uh, even if it was like, you know, some restricted uh, software, or you would have like a PPA available for that software, um, available for Ubuntu. Or worst case, you know, uh, the, the people published uh, the Debian archive. Uh, so what Flatpak does is basically remove that entire advantage, that almost monopoly that Ubuntu had over um, the distribution of desktop Linux third-party applications. Because now, yeah, you, most people still distribute like uh, PPAs or uh, Debian packages, right? But now, anybody on FlatHub can take that Debian, can spin up a Flatpak based off of that, and anybody with the Flatpak runtime can now run that application, right? I'm, I'm using OBS right now. You know, the, the software that I'm recording right now is a Flatpak, which is crazy, right? Uh, OBS Studio itself only releases Debian packages um, and relies on the community to package it for various distributions but I'm using the Flatpak version, right? Anybody who has Flatpak can run the same version of the software that I'm using right now. Um, and I'm able to run OBS Studio on Wayland. Like, I can't underscore like how much a big uh, deal of Flatpak plus Wayland plus these other stuff is uh, for the modern desktop Linux experience. And just the fact that all this stuff is being driven by Red Hat and Fedora and that kind of Ubuntu's no longer relevant, all its advantages are gone. For example, right, Flatpak, like, Ubuntu still hasn't adopted Flatpak full-heartedly. They're still clinging onto snaps. You know, you heard the big stink about Firefox being forced to be a snap package um, on, the, on the latest Ubuntu release, which is kind of ridiculous, right? Um, it's kind of holding their users captive to push their own technology that everybody knows is kind of dead on arrival nowadays but yeah it, it just just going back to that right like all the modern innovations in desktop Linux is coming from Red Hat and because of that is debuting in Fedora so firmware update right like you no longer have to make a free DOS live USB 
and drag the the executable onto that USB, you know, and reboot and boot up the USB and run the exe there to update the firmware of your BIOS or update the firmware of your uh, mouse or something like that, right? It's it's all automatic, and that's Red Hat and Fedora. Wayland and the latest gnomes, Red Hat, Fedora, lib input, you know? I'm able to use gestures. I'm able to s switch my desktop, you know? Look how smooth that is. I'm, I'm able to scroll, like, very nicely. That's lib input. That's Wayland. That's gnome. Flatpak. I'm running OBS Studio right now on Wayland, you know, with hardware acceleration, with zero tweaking on my end. Like, even when I say back in the day that Ubuntu was the default place for running desktop Linux applications, it was still a pain in the ass. Um, you had to, you know, uh, uh, install like two or three uh, dependency PPAs because, you know, there's version matching or whatever, right? And with Flatpak, things just work. And the newest thing, right, is, the newest development is Pipewire and WirePlumber and it's now uh, LibCamera for just basically like modernizing the, the, the Linux like multimedia stack entirely like almost seamlessly, right? Like uh, the, 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 the applications didn't have to do like a whole like another switch from, from also to pulse audio and stuff like that, right? Like everything just worked. The switch to pipe wire just happened like that. So basically all the innovations are being driven by Red Hat. Ubuntu is fighting those innovations only to adopt them later. Um, and if you want to be on the future of the Linux desktop, you basically just use Fedora. Like, it, it, it's just, it, it's, it's almost silly how, how much, it, over the course of eight years, how much, you know, Ubuntu has just chipped away its goodwill and how good Fedora has gotten just by polishing and just by iterating, you know, and just by improving their, their product. Um, other things, right? Like, Codecs are no longer an advantage for Ubuntu because a lot of the implementations got cleared legally for inclusion in Fedora. Even though it's you know all open source, it's cleared legally. You have open H.264. Um, you don't have to install uh, RPM Fusion if you don't want to. Uh, NVIDIA drivers are finally packaged well for, for Fedora. Um, that happened like a couple of releases ago, but that was like a huge deal, right? Like you install uh, your NVIDIA drivers, Kudo works, uh, Optimus works, you know, everything just works right out of the box, you know, uh, OpenGL vendor, right? Uh, Ubuntu drivers, right? Like one of the, one of the main reasons to use Ubuntu, right? To have working NVIDIA Prime support is, is, is now, is that, that advantage is gone. In fact, uh, the other thing happened where since a lot of the drivers are based off of the open source stack, right? Like AMD, AMD GPUs are based off of Mesa. You want for best performance, you want the latest versions. Fedora does that better than Ubuntu because they include the, the latest kernels and the latest releases of those hardware enablements. While for Ubuntu, especially for the LTS releases, you have to install a bunch of extra packages or repositories. I think it's like uh, HWE, like hardware enablement next or whatever. But it's just, it's just messy when compared to Fedora, right? It just works and you're running the latest kernel and the latest drivers. It's great. And, and they really nailed the, uh, the, the upgrades from Fedora version to Fedora version uh, compared to Ubuntu at least where um, upgrading from the non-LTS releases to the non-LTS release, like it wasn't a seamless operation compared to how it is in Fedora. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I talked about, right, is actually covered in one of the newer blog posts by, by our friend here at Red Hat. And he basically talks about a lot of the stuff that I mentioned, um, just from a more behind the scenes, more of a doer than an observer kind of way, where he's talking about Wayland and lib input and Pipewire and Flatpak and firmware update, right? All these innovations, all these things that make desktop Linux possible and usable on a daily basis now, and how that's basically just tied to the entire purpose of Fedora, at least from the workstation, from the desktop point of view. And yeah, um, <laughs> there's not much to say, right? Like Fedora and Red Hat have just been knocking out of the part. Meanwhile, Ubuntu has just kind of been atrophying and, and I don't know what they're doing at this point, you know? 
it, it just doesn't make sense. They're holding their users captive, you know? They're, 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 they're holding their large user base captive to try to push their own technologies, even when their track record for that is horrible and they just end up um, adopting whatever Red Hat develops anyways, right? What do we think? Uh, uh, bizarre, right, for version control. No, we're using Git now. Okay, fine. Uh, upstart. Oh no, we switched to systemd now. It's fine. Unity. Oh no, 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 we switched to GNOME. It's fine. Uh, Mirror versus Wayland. Oh no, 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 forget Mirror. We'll, we'll use GNOME and we'll get Wayland for free. And, and now Snap. Snap is not going to end well. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but maybe it'll, it'll live on on the server, but, but desktop Linux is moving away without Ubuntu. Like, I can't think of any modern contributions besides some performance optimizations. And that's only like one guy at Canonical, the company that makes um, Ubuntu. That's only one guy who's doing these these contributions. I can only think of like one place where Ubuntu is contributing to desktop Linux. And the rest of it is just kind of leeching, leeching off of Red Hat, leeching off of Debian. And so I think it's high time that we say that uh, Fedora is the champion of the desktop Linux, you know, like, at this point, there's no other reason to use anything else. Unless you're a big nerd and you like Arch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little rant, this video. And I'll see you guys later. Pseudo Pluto out.